Have a seat, please. <clears throat> um, my beautiful wife and I just returned from 10 days of rest in uh, Riviera Maya, sitting on the beach, just... Uh, uh, I, I get it once a year. Then I got to go the whole year. So I'm thankful for that. But I'm going to be very raw and honest with you, um, something I haven't exposed of myself to you yet. But on, while I was on the beach, um, when I took my shirt off to start getting sun, I was very conscious because I think I look fat. Thank you. See, you baited right there. No, I feel that way. That's just my perception of my image. Okay? Now, God taught me some great things while I was lying there on the beach. Um, but what I began to just settle into and look around, everybody, I categorized the men in three different ways. Maybe this goes back to my college days, you'll relate. Kegger, pony keg, and six pack. <laughs> now, there's a lot of men that, and, and I'll be honest, the vast majority of us out there were my age. I'm going to be 68 in a couple of months. We're old guys out there, okay? Not the young studs. This wasn't that environment. There were a few running around, but the vast majority of us were older folks. And for one reason or another, some men just let themselves go and go. And that's cool. And there was a point where I was lying there thinking, wrongfully, why would he do that? I wouldn't dare show up like that and walk the beach without a shirt on. I just wouldn't. Bah, bah, hey, bah. And I had an epiphany about that situation. And God was teaching me that they are comfortable in their image. They're okay with it. Why shouldn't I be? Why do I look at someone else's image and go, I wouldn't do that. That's not right. Who am I to do that? Your image is you. What you want to reflect. Now, we all get up in the morning and we all are very, very concerned about the way we look. I can tell. I haven't seen anybody in here that looks like they just rolled out of bed, still in their jammies, and they show up. That was Jessica about five months ago in a teaching. <laughs> but we get ready, don't we? We get up, and I know you ladies spend some time in front of the mirror, fixing your hair, doing your makeup, looking your best, but there's some image in your mind that you want to present. Some image. Mine, you've always seen me in blue jeans and boots. Mine is comfort. I don't care what anybody else thinks about the way I look. I'm going to be comfortable. It's not meaning to be disrespectful to anyone. I don't intend that. But I'm comfortable in my own skin to say, I'm going to wear jeans and boots because I'm very comfortable in that. Okay? may not be yours. But during that time, lying on the beach, watching people go by, I got a sense that just said, all of our images come from the world. Magazines, Hollywood, men in the movies, whatever. <clears throat> and you don't find that in the scriptures. Your hair must be a certain way. You must wear a certain type of suit or pants or whatever. So we have this image from the world that we were raised with that Hollywood tells the ladies, this is what you're supposed to attain to, which is a lie. Hollywood tells the men, you've got to be this way, which is a lie. Because pretty much everything in the world's a lie run by the devil. We know that. So this leads to my teaching on which image do you spend more time on? 
the way you look every day to the world trying to impress the world? Or are you concerned about your image that you're supposed to take on from your Heavenly Father? Which one would you say is more important? The latter. Exactly. The Word of God tells us that we are not to focus on the things that are seen because those are temporal. We are to focus on the things that are unseen for those are eternal. How do you see the image of God? He's spirit. It's like, huh? I, well, how do I do that? Well, I hope to help answer that today. But during that time, <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting over a little cold I got laying out in the sun. <laughs> I, 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 that wasn't good, okay? Um, but in the garden, when God decided to create man, and, and here's something that I've thought about that I cannot document in the Scripture, so I'm going to tell you straight up, it's just my personal opinion. We know that God created angels. They're created beings, spirit beings. We don't know exactly when he did that, but we know it was prior to the fall of man because there were two cherubims posted at the garden to keep man out. So we know they existed at that time. We know sometime prior to that, that Lucifer, the angel of light, tried to usurp God, and there was war in heaven, and he lost, and one-third of his angels were cast out of heaven. When that was, we don't know. It's not clearly documented, date and time. But I wonder, since God is so loving, that he created these angelic beings whose purpose was to serve and love him. He has angels that worship him all the time, 24-7 on our clock. He's not bound by time. So they do it all the time. He created them to serve him and worship him. That was why they were created. Okay. I'm certain he shared his vision of creating mankind which is a different type of being than had ever existed before, and that here's his plan. You guys, angels, are going to serve them. And Lucifer being Lucifer, full of envy, wanting to be number one and number two, might have said, I'm not going to serve these things. What are you, crazy? I'm the number two guy. I don't want to do that. War breaks out in heaven. He loses. Now, I don't know if it went that way, but it fits for me. Okay. Um, he's, he's out. That's the important thing. And God created man in Genesis 1, 27. <clears throat> so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God intentionally set out to make us the way he wanted us. What was it that he created us to do? To represent him on the face of the earth and bear his image to the world. Okay? We would have dominion over the earth and be his replicates. Here's God's love. That was the purpose we were created for. Well, didn't work out that way. Got to the second person and failed. They couldn't do it. So God set things in the motion. But that was why we are created. To serve Him. To love Him. That's why He created us. So now it, we stepped out of that through time. The Old Testament, he's trying to get people to see, if you just worship me, I'll take care of you. They tried, succeeded sometimes, failed other times. You can see the roller coaster ride as you read the Old Testament. Okay? 
goes on and on and on. Finally, his son comes. The man who finally lived the way God wanted him to. The second Adam who did what the first Adam could not do, who failed. Jesus Christ demonstrated, hey, this is why we're created, to love God, serve God, to do the Father's will. One purpose, one mission, that's it. He lived that life. So we have a model to follow. Now, we come to Align Ministries. We have many, many great believers here that just show the love of God in their hearts every single Sunday that we're around them. And we could look at them and go, man, I want, I want to do what they do. I want to be the way they are. That's awesome. I can see that, and then I want to apply that in my life. Okay? Jesus Christ was that model. We have it in the Scriptures. We can read those and ask God as we meditate on the Word, please show me what you mean by this. When He did this, how do I incorporate that into my life? I want to live like this. That's the transformation that Garrett spoke about. We have so much of the world still ingrained in our hearts that we've got to weed it out. We've got to choose not to be fashioned to the world, to look like the world, because it's false. Talk about fake news. <laughs> don't want that. But it's a lie. And I don't know about you, but I don't like dealing with liars. I find somebody's been lying to me a time or two. I just have a tendency not to want to deal with them anymore. Well, the devil's been lying to you since the day you've been born. And we still seem to fall back on those lies and trust them. Then we find out, yep, it was a lie. Shouldn't have done that. Don't do that. So Christ lived his life as a model to show us. His image was that of serving his heavenly Father. When he went to the cross, man, his appearance on the cross was so different than when he was living that he was marred beyond any recognition of a human man. The reason that occurred is that God was showing you what happened to man's appearance when he sinned in the garden. He didn't look like God's image anymore. He was a totally opposite. You couldn't recognize man when he sinned compared to what God had intended for him to be to reflect his image. So when you look on the cross and you see a painting and you can't tell if he's a man, that's sin. That's what sin looks like. It's not what you want to look at in the mirror. You don't want to see yourself that way. But he took it to the cross so you wouldn't have to. We have Holy Spirit. And God is more concerned about the inside of you than the outside. Look at 1 Samuel, if you would please, 16. When he came and he looked on Elab and he thought, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. This is the prophet Samuel going to anoint a new king. And he's trying to figure out who of the Jesse's kids is that. The first one obviously looked kingly. From the senses, he was probably tall, muscular, good looking, strong, and he by his senses, Samuel said, yeah, that's got to be him. Next verse. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. 
We've heard that quoted many times. God looks on the heart. He looks at you and he says, I see why you do what you do. And I still love you. I think of a father with a baby who's just learning to walk. If you've ever been a part of that experience as a father, it's very thrilling. You see your child stand. And then after a while, they're willing to let go and take that first step. And when they fall, the father doesn't say, you're never going to meant to anything. You couldn't even walk. You failed. No, he doesn't. He lifts him up, encourages him or her, puts him back on the table, and lets him try it again. You don't get mad at the child for trying to walk but failing. God doesn't look at us and get mad when we blow it. His love surpasses that. He says, yeah, I know you blow it, but come on, you can do better. Come on, come on. Keep coming. You got this. You can do this. See, I believe when God looks at us, He sees His Son, Jesus Christ, who always did His will. And Christ died so that God can see us that way. So, if I blow it, God knows, I know I blow it. I know that, but there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. So, I'm not going to wallow in self-pity. Oh, Father, I blew it. It's on me. My bad. I didn't mean I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to move straight. Okay, good. Let's forget about it. Move on. God doesn't remember it. He doesn't bring it up again. Because he looks at your heart. What do you want? What's your motive for wanting to do his image? To look like him. That's what we all strive to do. And we can learn from each other. We can grow off of each other here. And as we as a collective body align to Christ... Okay, we can encourage one another and help each other in that endeavor in a very loving environment here. Nobody gets judged here. Your past is your past. Nobody can do anything about our past. That image is over with. What, what good? Is, I can't go back in time and change anything. If I could, I'd have hair. But I can't change that. Okay, it is what it is. I'm going to live in the moment. I'm going to do what I can do now for today and tomorrow. I want to help as many people as I can understand their identity in Christ. Because if their identity is in the world, the world is going to beat them down. But if your identity is in Christ Jesus, you're going to be loved. And that's not a bad thing. Being loved is a pretty good thing, okay? I kind of like it. I'll take that. But the image that we are concerned with is that of our Heavenly Father as demonstrated by His Son, Jesus Christ. How do I walk? Well, we can look at the Old Testament Scriptures and the prophecies of the Son of God coming. We can look at the Gospels and read the different aspects of his life through the four Gospels and go, I want to apply this in my life. And then go out and try it. Make an intentional effort every day. Start your day with the Heavenly Father. Start your day in the Scriptures. This is what I want to look like. The world is always going to try to throw something in your way. So what? What? Some days it rains. You get wet. It's over. You get inside, out of it. You get away from it. Devil throws something. Get away from it. Just don't have anything to do with it. But keep your mind's eye on where you're going. What's your destination? What are you working on to better yourself in his image? To be the way he wants you to be. To look the way he want you to look. Have you noticed we all in this room look different? God created you that way. He didn't create me with a voice like Jessica. Or I would be up here like this. No. He didn't give me a good voice to sing with. 
okay, that's not my area of life. But I have other areas that he did build into me that I'm good at serving in. Find yours. If you don't know what they are, start volunteering, doing all kinds of stuff, and find your niche. You will excel in whatever that is. You will begin to see the real you come out, the image of who you truly are. Now, as sort of a guide to kind of help you along the way, kind of a check mark, yeah, am I doing good or not? 1 Corinthians 13, you bring that up, I think is a pretty good guide. I'm not saying it's a step-by-step, you got to follow this. I'm just saying if you look at this and then ask yourself, love is patient. Am I a patient person? If I am, I'm applying love. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. Oh, that's a big one. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves I guess that's it, huh? <laughs> In my mind, I know the slide. I got, a, I got another one coming. Um, this is a way that I can look at every day and go, am I living love? God is love. That's his image. He wants me to represent him in this life. Jesus was the firstborn among many brethren. Guess who they are? Us. That's right. We now represent Him. He was the Word made flesh. Guess what, guys? We are to be the Word made flesh. Flesh made Word. We are to be the Word. Okay? It wasn't God's desire only to get you into the kingdom. It's His desire that the kingdom gets in us. To make that transformation happen. You can just read the word and talk the word and all that and never live it. No, it's got to come from the inside out. It's got to be who you are. Throw up the next slide if you would, please. Now, the world is what love is not. It's the opposite. The world isn't going to love you. It's going to be that I'll do for you if you do for me. But the love that's spoken of in 1 Corinthians 13 is unconditional love. I don't want anything in in return. Just going to love. No return. Next. Love is not. Go ahead. And I listed these so that you could see them distinctly. Love is not envious. So if you're being envious, it's not love. It's not proud. Love is not arrogant. Love is not rude. Love is not cliquish. Love is not touchy. Love is not suspicious. Love is not happy with evil. These are things that love is not. So if you see those, you go, "Ah, I'm off base. I need to readjust and move on. Okay, next. Love is all these things. Go ahead. Tolerable, believable, hopeful, enduring, kind, rejoicing, patient, and unending. You put on love as you understand it from this section of scriptures, you'll know, and so will anybody else, that you're living love. You're giving the example, showing the image of love to other people. 
Is it easy to see when someone is kind to you? How about when they're patient? Yeah, you know that. You're like, oh, man, okay. How about when they forgive you? Yeah, that's a big one. Hard for people to do. But the image that God wants us to focus our time on is what He wants reflected to the world so that the world, who doesn't know God, can look at that and go, man, I want that. I don't know what you have, but I want that, and so they'll come. They'll come to a line. They'll come to God, which is the ultimate destination. We don't just bring them here to church. We want to get them saved to get the kingdom in them so they can be representatives of God. You guys are some of the best examples in manifestation that I've seen in my 40 years of serving God in various states. Um, And I mean that with all my heart because your heart is evident in wanting to serve other people. The people next to you, you care about them. And anybody else that comes in, you care genuinely. And that's an awesome, awesome thing to see, to be a part of. So I'm blessed to be a part of it with you. I hope you got something out of it today. I hope you carry it out. God bless you.